I am Peter Fisher, the coding teacher at howtocodewell.net. If you are learning Python, PHP, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Docker, Linux, or anything else to do with web development, then do check out howtocodewell.net forward slash courses. Links are in the description below. This video is sponsored by Hostinger. Check out hostinger.com forward slash Peter Fisher for fast, reliable, and affordable web hosting. Link and discount code in the description below. Hello coders, today we're going to be talking about refactoring code and in particular when to do so. Before I do though, let's just define what refactoring is. So refactoring, what on earth is that? Well, refactoring is the act of changing the code to make it more concise, more readable and more understandable. It is not changing functionality. You are not adding functionality or removing or editing functionality. You are not changing the behavior of your code either, which means that you're not doing any huge broad sweeping changes to the different layers or architecture of your code. You are making it more cleaner, concise, and more readable, which means that you could be changing variable names, class names, method names, all of that kind of good stuff, file names even. So if you've got a variable called X and a variable called Y, what on earth does that mean? Are these coordinates or is it something completely different? So perhaps you want to be calling them what they should be. Perhaps they should be called product or category instead. Okay, so that's what refactoring is. So when should you go about refactoring? Well, as I've mentioned, refactoring is not the act of changing the behavior of the code or adding new features. So refactoring, in my opinion, should be done after you've done all of that, after you've changed the code, after you've added new features or removed new features. In fact, in my opinion, these are two extremely separate things. I would even go as far as creating a different branch or, you know, just specifically a, a single commit that does the refactoring and so forth. The reason being is that you don't want to be muddling up the refactoring as well as the code or the, the feature that you're creating, okay? So for example, refactoring code might have a lot of broad reaching effects. Say for example, you change the class name. Now you've got to change all the places that that class is injected. Let's say, for example, you change the variable name. Now you need to change all the places that that variable is referenced. Let's say, for example, you change a method name. Now you have to change all the places that that method is called. Okay. And therefore it can actually be quite broad reaching and you don't want to be in the situation where you are creating a new feature. Let's say, for example, you're just adding a new page or you're adding a shopping cart um, and you go and have a look at this piece of code that you are working within. And perhaps you're going, um, actually this should be called that, but perhaps that is being called or referenced by a completely different feature that someone else perhaps could be working on at the same time. This leads to a lot of confusion, a lot of sort of um, messy code where some of it's refactored, some of it isn't refactored. And then you get bugs where, you know, someone hasn't done the refactoring part and you have, and it, yeah, it just gets confusing. And then you get into the state where, you know, you can't push that feature out until this feature is done because you have some structural changes in here. And it just gets into a bit of a nightmare, a bit of a mess. And actually that is the, that is a very common uh, issue that pushes out project deadlines. All right. Where you're working on a feature, but you, you also go, actually this variable could be called this, or this class could be called that. And then you go and change everything else that that uh, refers or is associated with. Um, and then you have to test all of that as well. And it just becomes really awkward. So I am in the opinion that it is okay, and this is a bit controversial, it is okay to push to production code that is smelly, smelly code, unrefactored code, because you are building a feature. You should have tests, and we'll talk about testing in a minute, that back up the confidence that that feature is working. Okay. It doesn't matter how badly that code is written. If that feature is working, that feature is working. And then after that feature works, you then go and refactor that work. But there could be a push to production uh, between the actual refactoring of the code and 
building the feature um, or after the feature is built, I should say. So let's talk about testing. Now, testing is a very interesting subject. It's, we could talk about this until the cows come home, but let's just talk about it in the sense of refactoring. Testing is extremely important as everyone should know, and everybody should be testing their work. If you're refactoring your code, you should make sure that you've got tests to back up that the refactor is actually doing what it should be doing, right? That you've captured all of the cases that are associated to that refactor. You know, you've, you've captured all of the, the changes to the method calls or the variable names or what have you, the class names or the file names and so forth. For those who watch my Twitch live streams, that's twitch.tv forward slash how to code well, where I'm actually writing code um, and I'm talking to people on the stream, I do a lot of test driven development. This is where you're doing tests before you actually write the code. You write tests to define the behavior, to define the, the requests and the responses of the code, what it should be doing. And then you write the code. So you write the failing code, write the failing test first, right? And then you write the code that makes that test work. Now it doesn't matter if the code is, like I said, smelly code, you have a test that backs that up. And then once that test is passing, you can then push that to production or, or what have you. Then you do the refactoring and you do that in, like I mentioned before, in a completely isolated manner. So you accept the fact that there is smelly code, you identify that, and then you refactor that, um, and then you push that out. But the key here is right at the start, you have a test, a test to ensure that that feature is working. So it doesn't matter what you refactor, how you refactor, if that test fails, then you know that you've broken something whilst you were refactoring that. And yes, I appreciate that you might be creating a fragile piece of code because you now have to change the test all the time, right? So you go and make a little tweak, a little change. You've changed a variable name, you've changed a class name or a method name or what have you. Just imagine all the tests that you have to change to, to make that work. But believe you me, it's worth doing that. It really is. It's worth doing that because the tests will be aware of what breaks and what doesn't break. You as a coder will not remember every single instance where that variable name is, is used or that method is called. Okay. So you can't, you shouldn't go with your own gut and go, yeah, I think it's going to be okay. Have a test to back that up. So you're testing the feature that you've developed and then you're testing that the refactor hasn't broken that feature. And also you're testing that that refactor hasn't broken any other feature in the mix as well. So that is my take on refactoring and testing. It's been brought up a couple of times uh, on the Twitch live streams where people have mentioned that perhaps I'm refactoring too little or I'm testing too much. Uh, my opinion is that you refactor once the feature has been built and it's okay to write smelly code as long as you acknowledge it's smelly code and you refactor that later on. There's been a couple of people who've said that perhaps, you know, don't you know that you could put this in a base class and you could have other methods calling upon that? Sure, I appreciate that. But because I don't have any tests to back that up yet, I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to do that once I have tests to give me a level of confidence that that refactoring has worked. I live stream, like I've mentioned before, on twitch.tv forward slash how to code well. I do that mostly on Sundays and weekdays. Weekdays is a 7.30 British summertime and Sundays is usually around 2.30 here in the UK. But thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding everyone and I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>